Hi there, I'm Gavin. So uh, now we're at a critical juncture. We're going to continue uh, working on this MicroMouse project. We're gonna add actuated joints. And so we've already seen one joint here, the prismatic joint, and we just basically t told it to hold still uh, by feeding in a position of zero. Um, and then that's connected to the world frame. But what we're gonna do is um, add revolute joints. So the prismatic joint adds one degree of freedom and constrains the other five, and one translational degree of freedom at that. What we're gonna do is add revolute joints. So let's look at those real quick. So I'll open up the library browser here, and we'll go into the Simscape multi-body joints section. And we'll go over here to revolute. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay. So we've already, we already know that uh, we're gonna be uh, oriented in the right way because the Z, uh, well, let's see here. The Z axis is right through the axis of the wheel. And if we look at the definition of the revolute joint, um, the frame constrains the origins of two frames to be coincident. Um, and it rotates around the z-axis. So that's kind of the important part in terms of orienting the frame. Um, now we need to be careful about how we connect these. So let's uh, use Control r a couple times to rotate this around. I want to disconnect, not the front stabilizer, so there it is, wheel one, from the rigid transform. And then, I'm going to put in this block. We might have to do a little rearranging to get the, the space correctly and reconnect it on the other side. I'm going to drag these over a little bit. Okay, now this is really important. And I have a note here to change the transform back. That was at the end of last, uh, I'm going to delete it. At the end of the last time, we put an offset in so that we could see the. Um, instability. Well, I'm going to take that back out. So it's zero again. Okay. Now, it might seem unclear whether the contact should go on one side of the, the revolute joint or the other, but bear in mind, okay, remember how we were talking about this portion here? They're, they're all rigidly connected together, and so what we want to do is actuate a joint relative to that rigid connection. So our contact, we actually want to be connected to the wheel body that's being actuated, not to the stuff that's rigidly connected. So it's really important not to try to connect the uh, contact force on the other side of the revolute joint. It needs to be with the wheel one body, or the solid. Okay, so there's one. And um, what we want to do now is we could, we could run this and it would work, but... Um, it's not going to be extremely exciting because uh, there's no actuation. So now it has a degree of freedom, but no reason for it to move. So we're going to go into the revolute joint here and actuate it. We're going to make the torque automatically computed and the motion provided by input. So in other words, we're going to prescribe the motion. We're going to tell it to rotate and the torque will get figured out internally. Okay, now we're gonna grab one of these simulate to PS converter blocks. But before we do that, I'm gonna start hiding some of these, uh, the names. Uh, here, I'll show you what I'm doing. This is a little bit easier to see. There we go, show block name. So I'm, I'm just hiding these because they are getting to clutter clutter things up and uh, we don't want them to be cluttered. So we just go right click and then format and then uncheck the show show uh, name. And so we'll leave, we'll leave the joints, the names of the block names of things that make sense to leave, but rigid transforms and things like that, not really. So we don't really, uh, we don't need to have their names up there. Okay, so that cleans things up a good bit. Now let's um, right click and drag to copy this guy. Control R a few times to rotate it around. 
then I'm going to connect it to the input. So this is prescribing a motion. And now I'm going to double click on that block and say, I can't feed in signal unit of meter to something that's asking for a rotational position. So I'm going to put in radian, RAD. And then I want that angular position to change over time. So I'm going to go come back here to sources, and go down to ramp, drag that on here. Okay. And I think this is all good. We'll start one radian per second um, at time zero. All right. So we'll update this and we'll go for, let's go for five seconds. Now let's run it. Ah, what did I forget? Not enough input derivatives. Okay, so this is something that you'll run into um, when you do this the first time too. And I'm kind of glad that I forgot to change it because it's, it's good to have that pain of the diagnostic, the error. So it's talking about this, um, this new converter that we, if we double, if we click on the link here, it'll highlight it for us. And it's saying not enough input derivatives were provided, um, having to do with with the, the solve, and um, basically it's not smooth enough is the problem. So because we have this analytic ramp, and then we're feeding in to prescribe motion for a physical system that, that can't make that perfectly sharp corner there. So what we do is we double click on this uh, Simulink to PS converter, and then we click on the input handling tab. And there's a different ways to do this, but I find the best most of the time is just to filter the input derivatives in a calculated way. So it actually lets you do first or second order filtering. And the higher, the, uh, the smaller this um, time is in seconds, the more accurate you know, the finer grain the simulation will be. We don't really need it at a thousandth, let's do it at a hundredth of a second. That should be fine. And now we'll press run. Okay, now we've got something interesting happening here. So we've got one wheel locked up, we've got one wheel actuated, which is the left one, right? Wheel one, it's blue and we are pushing ourselves around on that one and bouncing from the back to the front. So that's really great. Now we're starting to get some action. So all we need to do now, we're almost there for what we're gonna to cover today, is just um, duplicate the same joint and we'll attach it in the same way to wheel two. So we'll take off that connection and that connection and we'll add in the joint and we'll turn it around. It won't actually matter for this, but might as well have good form. Connect the base to the rigid transform, the follower to the body, and uh, Simulink to PS converter. And for the moment, we're just gonna feed the same ramp into it. We'll, we'll do something more interesting soon. And that should get us forward, or actually probably reverse direction. Okay, so when I run this, I'm expecting something a little different to happen. Ah, what did I forget this time? Singularity, let's see. All right, let's, let's think this through. If we have a mass, oh, you know why? This guy is not connected. That's a good reason not to work. Okay. There we go. Much better. Should have had someone telling me what I was missing, obviously, there, huh? <laughs> okay. So, now we've got, uh, we've got the ramps. We're actuating both wheels. We're getting forward motion. We've got stabilization, bouncing on the front, bouncing on the back. We're in really good shape here. Um, and we're just about to leave the 3D space because this is kind of all we need 
as far as uh, the initial basic micromouse model. The rest of it's actually more with actuation and, and uh, feedback and that sort of thing. So, um, anything else? Let's see, we talked about hiding, uh, how to hide names um, to kind of clean things up. You go right click on the block, go to format, and go to show block name, and you can toggle it on and off. Um, that cleans things up pretty nice. And don't forget to uh, connect your contacts back up like I almost forgot to do. And yeah, so we'll probably rearrange this slightly, but uh, obviously we'll, we'll do it on camera so you can see uh, how I'm rearranging. And next time, let's see, what's up next time? We are going to do a little measurement and, uh, and then we'll get into the drive system. All right, thanks for watching and uh, come visit me again soon.